trouble maker. I've been a late night player. I've been broke as a joke. I've been a money maker. I've been a record breaker. Taking credit as an educator. I've been known to spit the flows and make a shaky, shaky thing. Popping, and locking, and stopping, and let it hang. Watch us as we drop this hip hop. It's like it stays. We make the whole room drop and everybody sang. We want the funk. We gotta have that funk. We kick it old school, we think we're so cool We take it back to the past, we gonna act a fool Ah, no jumps the middle Sports Buzz, the fanatical view I am your host, Scott D. Lewis, here live in studio Comcast Cable Channel 23, Danbury, Connecticut On this early, cold, chilly January 10th day um, and we are uh, getting ready for another show for you here from 6 to 6.30. And of course the show re-airs Fridays 1 to 1.30. You can check it out again and see what you missed this time around. Uh, right now we got our man Bob Broad Jr. in the uh, control room on, waiting on hand. Uh, Mr. Tui, Mike Tui from Expose Cinema. His show Friday nights at 10, Wednesdays at 1. He assures us he's on his way, and then uh, Bob will be sent in, and we'll hear his uh, docile tones on the microphone behind the camera. And of course, Bob's show, Spotlight On, Tuesdays, 9 o'clock, Wednesdays, 12 o'clock. Uh, and uh, you can check all those guys and their shows out. I'm sure Bob's got plenty of stuff to talk about with the Danbury Whalers as their season continues to cruise along, and uh, you can see a lot of their footage in action on Spotlight On, and also uh, you can find some of that stuff on Facebook and YouTube. Been loading up some full game action lately for Bob and his shows, so uh, all you Whalers fans out there, be sure to look online for that stuff. And of course, our show is online as well. You can find it on Facebook and all over the place. Um, we got plenty to talk about. Um, there was a BCS championship. That was quite a dud. We don't really need to spend too much time discussing what took place the other night in what was just a shellacking uh, as Bama roll tide. It was a tide of tears. Those Irish eyes were crying indeed. The Golden Dome filled with tears and they were not tears of joy as it was all over really in the first quarter of this game on uh, Monday night. And you know, it's the SEC it's the long layoff, and it's the powerhouse that is Nick Saban's squad. Three of four of the last four championships have been pulled in by Alabama and his boys down there. And uh, the SEC now, what, seven straight national championships for the conference? So really, it's a, a situation where college football is just at the mercy. They got to change this thing to the SEC championship, not the BCS championship, with the way things are going. Uh, for Notre Dame, the Golden Dome rose up again this year. Uh, everybody had visions of uh, them completing the dream season. They were undefeated. They were taking on the mighty Alabama, and uh, it just was not meant to be. Uh, you have to wonder about this long layoff. Uh, people complain about the long bowl season, 40-something days, I believe it is, uh, between games. And uh, did that have more of an effect on Notre Dame uh, than it did on uh, Alabama? Did it have any effect at all? Was Alabama just that much better than the undefeated Irish? Um, you know, I haven't heard too many people talking about that long layoff as a factor this week. Uh, they think it was just a juggernaut situation, but I still think if this game was played, you know, three weeks maybe off between uh, the championship and the end of the regular season, it uh, might be a little bit better for both squads to uh, show up game ready and the fans could have a better chance to see a better game. Uh, but with the way things are set up, the long layoff and all that stuff, you know, it's hard to expect a crisp game when teams have been sitting around just practicing, uh, meeting with the media, getting ready for the big game, dealing with all the hype and all that stuff. Uh, so, you know. Uh, it doesn't really provide for a great matchup. We get a few every now and then that are good. Uh, Texas USC comes to mind, uh, but a lot of times it's just not that good. Uh, we've seen the Big Ten lay down in these games against the SEC. Now we see the independent Irish uh, who played a heavy Big Ten schedule as they always do, uh, suffering the same fate. Uh, and again, Nick Saban, three of four uh, championships for Alabama puts him in you know pretty high class and he has four total remember he got one uh, with LSU uh, he's dabbled with the NFL we're not sure if he's gonna go back he seems to be pretty content right now staying in college football uh, so we'll see what happens 
And uh, there's still plenty of coaching vacancies to fill in the NFL. Um, we saw Brian Kelly actually from Notre Dame uh, get interviewed by the Eagles this week, the day after the game, which was uh, kind of surprising to see after, you know, they get shellacked like that. Uh, so the Eagles are still looking for a team. Speaking of the NFL, let's get right into it. It was wild card weekend, and much like the BCS game, it was more like wild duds weekend. Uh, a bunch of uh, games that did not go really all that well as far as a fan viewing perspective. The first game, of course, Cincinnati at Houston, rematch of last year's game, and the Bungles. No offensive touchdowns in the game. Andy Dalton, who's been better this year in his second year. The Bengals certainly looking like a better team this year defensively. They were pretty good in the game. They were within striking di distance of the Texans, but they could do nothing on offense. Late in the fourth quarter, Dalton had a total of 88 yards passing. Uh, he ended up with 120, I believe, or roughly around there, and they just went over 200 total yards in the game. So the Texans' defense did their job, and the Bungles, uh, Cincinnati, who have not won a playoff game in this entire uh, era of uh, their situation where they have right now. They have not won a playoff game in forever. So uh, Marvin Lewis just cannot get it done for those Cincinnati Bengals. He's been getting them to the playoffs two straight years now, but they can't come up with the goods once it comes to playoff time. So the Texans advance, and uh, they will be having a rematch against the Patriots who have been sitting around waiting, getting ready, and you had to figure that would be the case. Uh, and it's going to be a rematch of the uh, blowout that the Patriots put on in primetime Sunday Night Affair a few weeks back in Foxborough. The Texans get to come back to New England to take on those Patriots and see if they can uh, reverse the table, as it were, uh, and certainly they do not want to get blown out. Uh, the Patriots are getting healthier by the day. Uh, they will have a much healthier squad when it comes to uh, this rematch. So we'll see if they can uh, be better this time around. Uh, but you know how it is in the playoffs. Anything can happen. Uh, we've seen it before where a uh, regular season matchup does not necessarily mean uh, same situation for the playoffs. And that was the case on Saturday night. Uh, the Vikes, it was yikes all over again a week ago. It was a great Minnesota per performance in Minnesota, in the Dome. Adrian Peterson almost taking down the single season rushing record. The Vikings playing a great game, knocking off the Packers, forcing their way into the playoffs and a rematch with their division rival, Green Bay. And uh, then it was this rematch and it was a shocking situation. As the game is getting away early in the afternoon, News starts coming out that it's going to be Joe Webb. Ponder this, where is Christian Ponder? A secret injury that they did not really reveal. No one spoke about all week long. Apparently he banged up his elbow during the week and uh, he during the game against the Packers earlier in the week, but they kept that a secret and no one heard anything about it. And it was uh, all of a sudden, as you're leading into the game, he's doing his uh, pregame warm-ups, and he says, you know, I'm close, but I'm not feeling good. Uh, we're going to keep him out. And Coach Leslie Frazier says, we're going to save him for next week. Save him for next week. It's the playoffs. And our boy Bob Raw Jr. is miking up as we speak. I wonder what he has to say about this whole saving for next week. This is the playoffs. you got to play now. And uh, Ponder sits out. And the game was just a ridiculous affair because Joe Webb, uh, you know, wow. He threw some balls into the ground, into the dirt. He airmailed a bunch of receivers that were open. The Packers got their thing going. Uh, they cruised in the second half, didn't do much offensively as they were comfortable in the lead. And it was all Green Bay as the Packers yeah. come up with a win after losing just a week ago to the Vikings, who looked very good as a solid team coming in. So that was the affair on Saturday night. When it comes to the Sunday games, again, we get a game affected by something. Colts at Baltimore. It was the Baltimore Colts game. I thought Baltimore. Le I thought the Colts left Baltimore. How could there be a Baltimore Colts game? But it was Baltimore getting a, a chance once again at revenge. They have yet to get their revenge against those Colts who marched out of town years and years ago. And uh, it was Peyton Manning typically uh, doing the honors 
uh, and getting those Baltimore fans uh, having just a bad taste in their mouth year in and year out. And uh, most recently in the playoffs, they've had some big games that they could not come up with the wins. So this time, Baltimore gets a chance to take out the rookie, Andrew Luck, and the Colts, and Chuck Strong, and the whole situation. But again, the Colts are affected as their offensive coordinator is rushed to the hospital prior to the game and he is not available to call the game and I think this affected their play calling situation for sure. One way or the other, it's just another game that had something else hanging over it and you have to wonder what would have happened if there was everything in place to play. This is true. Bobby, how you doing? I'm good. I'm, uh, I do Tim, enjoy Mr. the Tim. new uh, digs in yeah. the control room there. Uh, fun, fun. I didn't see any pictures pop up, but no, uh, no, uh, but I'm at just... least my image and uh, things like that were working, and yes. uh, we're here live. And uh, yeah, the... Mr. Tui has arrived. He's thank you, Mike Tui, for arriving. Of course, we mentioned his show, Expose Cinema, Fridays at ten, Wednesdays at one and the Bob's spotlight on. So, yes. yeah. So I'm talking about these games here, Bob, and, uh, you know, the Vikings were affected oh. by their quarterback situation, and Joe Webb was just a disgrace. The Colts, <coughs> they have their offensive coordinator right. rushed to the hospital pneumonia, and uh, that affects that situation. Plus, you got Ray Lewis doing his dance. Yeah. And uh, getting it. Oh, I mean, seriously. Uh, he looked like a bionic man. Out oh, there. yeah. He looked like he was going to go. He's got uh, the thing on his arm. He's yeah. got the cage on his face. I was like, was it really Ray Lewis or was no, this a robot? It was just a robot that came in. The I don't know if that was if he was really there uh, or what the situation was, but he played and he played well. And the uh, uh, Ravens finally get their revenge against the Colts and they knock them out of the playoffs. So they will be heading to mile high and uh, they will get to take on Peyton Manning. So. You know, they knock off the Colts this time, but it's been Peyton leading those yes. Colts against Baltimore with their bad feelings. So now they get the chance at double duty. How they, long has it been since they've been back to Baltimore? Well, I mean, it was in the 80s when yeah. that took place, right? And yeah. uh, Baltimore then was given a franchise in the late 90s when Cleveland uh, pulled the same shenanigans that Baltimore did. So, you know, this was really their first real revenge yeah. against the Colts because the other times maybe some regular season games I can't even really remember them getting it there but I know in the playoffs they've had a couple chances in recent years and come up short so Sunday afternoon late game we're yes. thinking all right maybe we're finally going to get ourselves a game and we really did get a game there was plenty <coughs> of drama but again we are affected by an injury yeah. to the quarterback oh, RG knee not RG3, RG it's knee, RG Knee. He, he's doing so well. Up 14-0. They juggernaut him in the first quarter. They marched right down the field against the chirpy, chippy Seahawks. Those sea bags, man, they like to they like to talk it up. They are a borderline dirty team. They certainly like to trash talk. Um, and uh, they were getting it handed to them early. 14-0, RG3, the Redskins. Hail, hail to the Redskins. The fans are going crazy, and uh, it was a good vibe happening there. But he goes to the sideline on that second drive, and he's uh, driving down the field, and he tweaks his knee, and uh, it's a bad situation there. He did finish that drive by throwing the touchdown pass right after that, but he clearly was affected, clearly not the same player after that. And from that point on, it was just chip, chip, chip away by those chippy Seahawks yeah. as they were uh, pecking back at them down 14 zip, 14 uh, 3, 14 10, 14 13. Eventually, they come back, they take the lead, they get the two point conversion, they're up 21 14. And at this point, it's too late. RG3 is done at yes. this point, but they still have him in. They run that bootleg play where he runs nine yards. And he could have been a 30-yard run, except for he's running on one leg. leg. Literally. Everybody at the stadium, everybody at home on TV is watching the game saying he cannot play. He's not effective. You got to get him out. They, they got this kid Clemens in the game. They should have gone to Clemens when it's 14-0 and oh, he yeah. tweaked the knee. I would, I, I you agree know, there. early in the second quarter, you could tell that he was not the same player. He was player. in so much pain, you know. So I think, you know, you got the lead at that point. Put the kid in who won you two games late in the year. He proved that he could play, maybe not at his level, but he's competent enough. And he had experience in the last few weeks. 
you know, get him in, manage the game, make a few plays, protect the lead, and try to come up with this win with RG3 being hurt. Instead, you know, they leave him in, and then he blows the knee out big time in an ugly situation on a bad snap, fumble, the uh, Seahawks recover, and that basically sealed the deal. Uh, the Redskins defense did come up big right there as they uh, held them uh, to a field goal to try to keep it in check, but at that point it was, it was too late. Damage was done. Was, yeah, and uh, they could not come back, and it was the Seahawks flying out of D.C. with the win. Uh, we saw a little punch in the face. Redskins player to one of the Seahawks at the end of the game. So, you know, obviously they were not happy about the way things went down, but the Seahawks are a tough team. You know, we don't know what would have happened if he was healthy. Right. Maybe they would have come back, um, and then maybe they would have been able to win the game anyways. But again, the whole weekend was marred by these injuries and these things going on and poor play and everything. So we never really will know what could have been for the wild card, wild duds weekend. But it's on to the uh, next round, some... divisional round. These Green Bay at be... San Francisco. Uh, bringing back memories of the ancient call. I've made it here right on the show, and yes. I'll do it again. Owens! Owens! He caught it! Green Bay fans remember that well. San Francisco treat it was. We'll see what happens this year. Uh, that's going to be a good game. Um, you've got Seattle heading down to the Dirty Birds, the ATL, who are getting no respect whatsoever. No one gives them a chance in this game, even though they're at home. They've got weapons on offense, high-powered passing attack, pretty solid rushing attack. Uh, defense has been good this year, causing turnovers, keeping the games low scoring. Uh, so I give Atlanta a chance this year. Maybe like last year, yeah. I'll be, you know, have my, uh, I gave them a chance against the G-Men last year. <laughs> we know how that went. They scored a total of two points in that game. Eight. But I think it'll be different at, home, different at home this year. I don't know that they'll beat Seattle. Uh, but I think they'll play well, and it should be a good game. And then, of course, Patriots, yes. Texans, and, uh, of I course, think that, Baltimore. Yeah. I think the Patriots should win without a problem. Well, maybe. And if uh, Denver takes care of Baltimore, it's going to be the dream matchup uh, where it's going to be uh, Brady and the boys, New yes. England, heading to Mile High. They have a bad history against the Broncos. They have a, a good and uh, sometimes bad history against Peyton. That'll be a great matchup. So there's plenty to look forward to this weekend with the NFL. Um, let's uh, let's talk a little basketball real quick. Let's shift to college basketball, Bob. Because I do want to talk about the UConn Huskies and their 99-78 win over DePaul the other night. Which Kevin Allen, you really got to love this story right now. I mean, we know they're not eligible for any postseason play, but they're 11-3. <laughs> They're playing pretty much small ball, but they got some players on this team that are playing very well. Um, they had a really disappointing uh, first game in the Big East against Marquette, overtime loss, a miracle three-point shot at the buzzer Marquette made to force overtime. Uh, so that was disappointing. But they come back and they uh, trounce DePaul, 99 points. Anytime you score 99 points in a college game, you know you got some guys playing well. So UConn, Kevin Alley looking well. Um, they are home this weekend against number 17, Notre Dame. So we'll see what happens uh, in that game Saturday. The Lady Huskies, speaking, against Notre, speaking of Notre Dame, they what got, is with the Lady Fighting know. Irish and no. the Lady Huskies? They have their number, Bob, 73-72. Another heartbreaker for the Lady Huskies who had moved into that number one spot. Not, not any longer as they fall to 12-1. and one. Tough loss for the Lady Huskies. Uh, real quick, though, on college basketball overall, the whole scene, Duke. Yeah, we love it when this happens. 15-0, uh, ranked number one right now. Michigan, how about that? Yeah. Fab Five or revisited. Michigan, the Wolverines, 15-0, number two. Louisville at 13-1, number three. Arizona, uh, no longer Lute Olsen's boys, but they are 14-0 at number four. And Indiana, so they are big. Big, big programs rounding out the top five, Bob. Indiana, 14-1. and one. 
So uh, some good things going on in college basketball. We'll pay more attention, and we will definitely pay more attention to uh, my Colorado State Rams. We know that the uh, football team (laughs) did not do so well. But the basketball team coming off a big dance berth last year, if you remember, Bob, uh, they did make the dance last year. They are off to a 13-2 start. All right. They uh, trounced St. Bonaventure's 85-64 this past weekend. Other impressive wins on the docket for them already this year. Washington they beat 73-55. Uh, Virginia Tech, they pummeled Vatech 88-52. And they also handed UTEP a loss, the UTEP two-step 62-58. One of their only losses, unfortunately, comes at the hand of in-state rival Colorado University, the Trust Fundalos, the Buffalo, 70-61, they lost that game. But we will be keeping track of both the Huskies and the Rammies and the overall NCAA basketball scene. But we got to get into the real basketball scene, Bob. The real basketball scene? NBA action. This week, it was fantastic. Thank God that uh, there was a good basketball game to turn to the night of the BCS championship because we know that the championship game was quite the dud. Uh, and if you were out of that game early, you could tune to the end of the Knicks and, and the, the Celtics, Celtics. renewing a rivalry up. early in the season. The first matchup between these two teams were pushed in the midway point of the season. They have not played yet. We know all about Brick City and their hot start. And uh, one of the surprise good teams in the NBA this year and their legitimate chance at uh, pushing Miami, making the Eastern Conference Finals, finally dethroning the Celtics in the Atlantic Division, all that stuff. We know about the Celtics, 500 team, uh, at times below 500 team, getting blown out in games, not looking so good with their new acquisitions. And here come the Celtics. And here comes the big ticket, Kevin Garnett, chirping, getting in Carmelo Anthony's ear, Bob. (laughs) Oh, and Melo having his worst shooting night of the year. And uh, you got to wonder maybe what Kevin Garnett was saying took him out of his game because Melo was starting to jack up shots like he's prone to do in bad situations, trying to take over the game, trying to come up with the win, but he was really too busy uh, engaging in the trash talk with Kevin Garnett. And uh, of course, it was Paul Pierce, the truth, uh, telling uh, Spike Lee, sit down, Spike. I'm the star on uh, Broadway tonight as he delivers the dagger late in the game. The Celtics come up with the victory in Madison Square Garden. It was their third straight. They backed it up with a fourth straight win, so they are above 500 now. On the move, perhaps. Avery Bradley's back. Defense has been much better since his return. They beat the Knicks the other night with no rage on Rondo, who just cannot stop bumping into refs. Yeah. Uh, in a memo to Rondo, you bump a ref, and especially if you've done it twice before and now this is your third time, you're going to get suspended, which right. he did. And Melo, speaking of suspensions, did not think he was going to get suspended, but the NBA does not stand for this activity. After the game, after the trash talking, after the technicals, he uh, storms his way off the court, tries to track down Kevin Garnett outside the locker room, waiting for him there. Then, after he gets dressed, he tries to go and meet Kevin Garnett at the bus, trying to get him before he gets on the bus. I'll see you outside. Hold me back. Hold me back. Uh, Plenty of security, plenty of cops involved, making sure nothing happened. And, uh, you know, really, I think it was all over Kevin Garnett's uh, particular interest in a specific cereal. I don't know if you've heard any of the the rumors about what was going on, but uh, he had some uh, words, perhaps, he felt that uh, Mello's estranged wife, Lala, oh, that, that, that could be the problem. had some uh, similar taste to uh, a specific Honey Nut Cheerio. Oh. We don't know if that's true or not. This is all speculation, but that's where it's at there. We don't know. I know when the uh, Knicks and the Celtics get together in a few weeks up in Boston in, a, I believe, an ABC Sunday affair, I'll be, be having a pregame meal of Honey Nut Cheerios on that day. <laughs> be a very ready. interesting A little game. extra milk, perhaps. Yeah. Um, real quick, because uh, we're running out of time. Eastern Conference, 
The Pacers looking very good in first place in the Central. Uh, the Bulls, no Derrick Rose, no problem. They're playing very well. And the Bucks, who fire their man Scott Skiles, who claimed to have said, I hate this team for the way they play. He gets shown the door, and they're still right in the mix, actually. Two games over 500. Um, of course, in the Southeast, you got the Hawks trying to battle Miami for first place, but the Heat are uh, getting it done so far. Out West, how about those Fakers, Bob? Yeah, I was just going to ask about Oh, that. Fakers fizzling, lost five in a row. And this is what I think is wrong. I mean, you got Dwight Howard, you got some of these injuries, Pau Gasol with the uh, whole concussion. You got the coaching change, no D'Antoni out there. You got Shobi Defiant trying to uh, say they're old and checking up shot after shot. I don't think the Fakers are going to get anything done until uh, Steve Nash does something about that hairdo. Oh, I mean, I what know. is with that hairdo? Come on, Steve. You're better than that. We need a better. You're in L.A. now. Do something. This is horrible. So the Lakers, the Fakers, uh, really not playing well at all. Uh, and I'm a little concerned about this. My team, the Memphis Grizzlies, led by Rudy, uh, good to be gay. They are engaging in trade talks, Bob. They're trying to trade him because they don't want to pay him. And they might even be trying to trade Zach Randolph. Yeah. I mean, this is ridiculous. They're off to a great start, 22-10. and 10. They're right behind San Antonio, who for some reason has played five more games than them. I don't get that at all. Uh, so they're right there. Uh, the Spurs, the Rockets playing very well out west. Oklahoma City, that whole Harden trade does not seem to be hurting them. They're playing well. Portland playing very well. Denver is playing pretty good. Yep. The Clippers may be playing the best out west. The Clip Joint taking over the fabulous forum. And uh, the Warriors still surprising everybody at 22 and 11, Bob. Yeah. Mark Action Jackson getting it done out there. Uh, so a lot going on in the NBA. Uh, all right, real quick, Hall of Fame, Hall of Shame. Nobody of gets shame. in, Nobody steroids, and first-year guys. I mean, I think Jack Morris really is the guy that you should be concentrating on, like Piazza, all these guys, Biggio. Uh, Biggio had 68%. I mean, those guys still. will get in, but they're first ballot guys. Nobody gets in on the first ballot, so stop all your crying, all you guys out there thinking this is, you know, they're lumped in with the steroid guys. Maybe they are, and maybe for good reason, but we don't know yet. Give them two, three years before we know. NHL lockout over. And uh, a rumor has it, Bruins versus Rangers to open the season January 19th. That's cool. Um, uh, Whalers, speaking of hockey, Saturday night, it's Westerners, Danbury Westerners, Westerners. night at the Danbury Ice Arena. So go down and check that out Saturday night. Uh, the Chili Cook-Off is what, February 10th? At the Ice Arena, what's that take place during the day? Yeah, one to four. One to four, and uh, that's February 10th. February 9th uh, in the morning at Two Steps, right downtown Danbury. It's the hot stove breakfast for the Danbury Westerners. 8 a.m. doors open, 8.30 food. Um, I do want to give a quick nod also to the soccer stars who came out to Newtown, led by former Newtown player Marcus Tracy, who's been a pro for a few years now. He's playing in MLS now uh, after playing in Europe. But Marcus Tracy, Landon Donovan, Kobe Jones, Mia Hamm, other great professional soccer players put on a clinic in Newtown to help those kids and help the community from Sandy Hook. So great job by them. And uh, that's our show. We'll see you next week. Happy viewing.